Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to my channel. Thank you very much for finding me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification to be kept up to date and make sure you continue to join the adventure. Today, guys, we're gonna be talking about feeding snakes. I hope you guys enjoy it. Welcome to Critter Cam. All right, guys, so what are we doing today? We're gonna to be feeding some snakes. So it's one of those jobs. Feeding is one of the coolest part of the jobs I like. I like to see the animals eat and grow. Uh, one of the byproducts of that obviously is that they shed and then they poop, so then you've got to clean the cages. That is not the most favorite job in the world. No one can admit to they like that. I mean, it is absolutely a nightmare. No sooner do you feed them, they poop, and it just continues to go around and around in a big loop. But the process is pretty important for these animals to grow. Now, when we're choosing food items, for the snakes. What I typically use as a rule of thumb is the diameter of the food item is going to be almost equal to the diameter of the snake that's eating it. So that helps me to make sure that I'm picking the right size food items. I don't want to go too big. Sometimes the animals, if you give them too big a food item, they'll try and eat it. If they're lucky and get it down, they might tear their intestines or their stomachs. Uh, they may die, they might try and regurgitate the food item, have a problem regurgitating and also die. Um, so it's pretty important and I know in the wild they don't get the opportunity to pick the size of the food item but um, it's a natural part of process of life that when they pick the wrong size food item they pay the price uh, nine times out of ten they will probably regurgitate the animal and then move on. Um, I've seen it here a few times I've seen uh, diamond pythons that have eaten possums and four days later you come back the snake's still in the same spot the next day you get up again and there's big regurgitation and you can see what's left of the possums left there because the snake hasn't been able to uh, basically digest such a huge food item in such a short period of time so I use the rule of thumb same diameter food to the same diameter of the snake now obviously if your snake's got a really tiny head then obviously you're not feeding it big enough food items because the head isn't stretching and it's not allowing the muscles in the jaws to grow to facilitate larger food items. So, you know, those type of people are probably feeding lots of smaller food items, uh, allowing the animals to grow but not the head to actually, and the muscles in the head to stretch and move and, and do its natural thing. Obviously the uh, exceptions to the rules would be wormers and blackheads, but um, those guys will chunk up real quick anyway, which is absolutely amazing. Now with the larger snakes, these guys come out, all guns blazing usually, you open the doors, pull the tubs out, and they come flying out, and they don't care what they grab. They'll grab your hand, your face, your chest, your stomach, and if you're really unlucky, you know, they can grab a little bit lower than your waist, and that is really painful. Probably the most painful bite I've ever had is a carpet python on the stomach. I've had you know all sorts of snakes biting on the chest, the shoulders, the neck, even the face. I mean, the money maker doesn't matter. The money maker will grow back, I guess. It's not much of a money maker anyway. It's a scary fest. But um, so there's a lot of cool things that can happen during feeding. You just got to be really, really cautious and be on your game. Otherwise, you're going to get bit. And biting usually means a lot of teeth, a lot of blood, a lot of pain. And if you're really unlucky for yourself and the snake, the teeth could be left behind, you could get an infection, and the snake could also get an infection in its mouth by having the, the teeth removed and tear its gums. So, always gotta be cautious when it comes to feeding. A few of the tools of the trade you're going to need for feeding is a decent snake hook, and this is one of the coolest snake hooks that I've ever got in my life. This was made by a good friend of mine at Cold Blooded Customs. He makes the snake hooks all himself, and a few of these hooks, not this one, I've had for over 20 years. This one here I've only had for about 15 years and it really, really can take it. I mean, you've got to imagine the weight of some of these snakes, especially the olives, is pretty heavy and coming right out about a metre away from your body, about three feet from your body and still being able to be supported is a cool thing. Another really cool uh, tool of the trade is a grab stick. Not always for grabbing snakes, but this is for grabbing food items. So we can grab the food items and basically put them right in front of the snake's face so he knows what's going on and when we're ringing the dinner bell and what it's all about. Uh, the second cool thing is using these two tools together. I mean, you use the hook, basically I use the hook to hook under the lip of the tubs, open the tubs with a food item in the grab stick so I can open the tub, offer the food item, the snake grabs the food, wraps it up, and then I can close the tub. Everyone's safe. I'm happy. My hands don't get smashed today. 
Now, big snakes are one thing. Little snakes, well, they're a little bit different, obviously. We don't tend to fear the little snakes as much, but trust me, when you're the dirt snake king and you deal with the little snakes on a daily basis, man, these guys basically have the biggest charisma out of all the snakes. These guys would take you on no matter how big you are. Remember, if these guys are a quarter of the size of a big snake, they're still coming at you all guns blazing and they're gonna have a go at you no matter what and they want something. They want their pound of flesh and it's usually your hands. So let's see how we go with these little tykes. So we're here in the baby room. The tools of the trade are a lot smaller. We just have a variety of different size hooks and we use long tweezers to be able to give a bit of distance between our hands and the food item because we want the animal to recognize the food item but we don't want them to recognize our hand as a food item. It's always a cool thing to try and achieve, making sure that long term you're not gonna get smashed too many times on the fingers because it really hurts. And when you're doing cleaning, always chuck a glove on because that's how you stop disease transmission, guys. So the rule still applies with even the smaller snakes, around about the same body diameter to the same size food item, and that makes really good steady growth rates. I mean, that I find is a really good key to growing baby snakes up into big, happy, healthy, long-term captive animals. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Make sure you hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you really, really enjoyed the show today, do me a big favor, guys. Hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much, guys, for watching Critter Cam. Until next time, see you later.